Night Frenzy. Brought to you by these fine local sponsors. Good evening, football fans, and welcome to week four of Friday Night Frenzy. I'm Chad Roderick here with Michael Lagerwell. It was another busy week on the Western Slope. Now, let's not waste any more time and jump right into the football. That's right. Let's start off here with GJ in GJ with the Grand Junction Tigers who hosted the Mountain Range Mustangs from Westminster. The Tigers are 0-3 to start the season. They desperately needed the win, but let's see that one. Holy cow, they're determined to win. Applegate with the throw. He's going to get picked off. It's a deep ball, and it's Mountain Range ball. A great play for the Mustangs. And how about that backdrop, folks? Only in Grand Junction, Tigers ball. Applegate here with the pitch. And Watkins finds the end zone, 6-0 GJ, and he's fired. <laughs> Take a look at him, nice jump there, nice hop. Now this is all Tigers right now. Applegate with the deep shot, and he finds Rorig right here for the deep one, oh, and that's another yeah. touchdown for Grand Junction. Man, this is a different looking team, and the crowd goes <laughs> bananas for it. Mustang ball here coming up in the third. Cameron Williams rolls to his left, Chucks up a prayer and it's picked off by who else but Will Applegate. But can they take advantage though? Now Applegate is gonna have the ball here. He's gonna run to his left and it's gonna be another pitch. And Watkins is home free. It's 21 to zero Tigers. But let's see how this one shook out in the end. And Grand Junction seals this one 28 to seven for their first win of the season and a much deserved win at that. The Tigers are on the road next Thursday to take on Overland in Aurora. Man, those Tigers uniforms look great. But now for a showdown between two of the premier football teams here on the Western Slope, the undefeated Delta High School Panthers. They traveled to Rifle to take on the also undefeated Rifle Bears. Now coming to tonight's game, both teams averaging around 35 points a game while allowing fewer than 15. But someone's got to leave tonight with a loss in the column. Now from the start, this game was all about trench warfare. Both these teams want to run the ball, but the Bears are obviously struggling to get the ground game going, leading to this long third down right here. We got some pressure from the number 51, Tucker Johnson, picks up his third sack of the season, forcing the Bears to boot the ball to Delta, who would not have those same ground game problems. Giovanni Romero and Ty Reed right here, slicing through the Bears' defense like butchers, leading to this big fourth down right here, fourth and 12. Ty Reed rolls out to his right. He's looking. They need this right here, and he finds Clayton Cryer in the end zone. Panthers pounce on that lead, 7-0. Now both teams, they would trade punts until right here. Deep ball thrown up for grabs, and that's Logan Gross, QB, and three safety for Rifle with a big INT. Could this be a momentum shifter for the Bears? A few solid gains right here to Sterling Cook, who cuts back across the field looking for extra yards. And then again, right here, a little fake run. Jump pass to Ty Tyston. And he for to Tyston and Gross is looking for another big play right here. Rolling off off his back foot. But he finds Brett Leho, his fourth interception of the year. And I'm going to say it, that throw was gross. Unlike this one, one of the many Ty Reed had to lead a methodical drive down inside the five-yard line. But could the Bears score? 20 seconds left, third down. Can the Bears keep it a one-score game? Could the Panthers score? And they get in 14-0 into halftime. And... It would be much of the same in the second half as Delta would roll Rifle 28 to 7. The Panthers continue their pursuit of a state championship. Now Rifle has a chance to bounce back next week with a home game against the Brush High School Beat Diggers. They're one and one and Delta has the academy coming into town. You may remember them. The Panthers beat them last year and route to their state championship appearance. Now chat, have you ever had a baked potato at a football game? Oh. <laughs> well, the PA at the Delta game was really pushing them. All the fixings. I almost actually checked out the, the concession stand to get a loaded baked potato. <laughs> well, if you want to talk about a loaded slate this week, let's take a look back at yesterday to see how exactly the Montrose Palisade game went down. The Bulldogs looking for their first win of the year. M Montrose trying to get to 500 at 2-2. Two and, two, and the Bulldog band was pumped for some Thursday night football. Opening kickoff is returned here by Austin Zimmer. 
and he's going to get down. He's got blockers. He's going to find a lane, and he's going to burst right down the middle of the field. And down oh. to the races, he goes. He could go all the, the way. way. And it's an 85-yard kick return touchdown for the Red Hawks to open up this game with a bang. Montrose ball again. Gage Wareham overshoots his man. And that's going to be a, right into the arms of Easton Embry for the pick. A big play on defense for the Bulldogs. They couldn't score. And this time, let's see, they couldn't score. And Gage Wareham this time with a beautiful fake pitch. Ooh. And he's going to sit on the defender and rolls into the end zone. Nice movement. And it's 14 to nothing Montrose. Now the Red Hogs got another stop, drove down the field, and it's Zimmer who punches it in again. 21-0 Montrose. The Bulldogs tried to run the ball, but it did not work. Like about we're gonna about to see right here. And boom! Cortland Nelson laying down the hammer for a big tackle for a loss. And Montrose here with the misdirection. It even faked out the camera guy as Aiden Griavala goes right through the D and all the way to the house. And the Red oh Hawks running goodness. away with it after one half up 28 to nothing. And the Red Hawks kept their foot on the gas and earned the shutout win over Palisade. 42 to nothing is the final. But next up, another tough test for Palisade as they'll be on the road against Golden. And Montrose will host a good Lutheran Lions team at home. Now Central traveled to Durango to take on the Demons, and it did not go their way tonight. Demons outscored them 51 to 28. The 3A team upsetting the Big Dogs in 4A. Central moves to 2 and 2 on the year, and they'll face another set of Demons. Happens in Glidenwood Springs. That'll be next Friday at home. Now, and Coleridge had a rough showing against Salida, getting shut out 33 to 0. The Titans are now 0 and 3 on the season. And it won't get any easier for Coleridge as they host 4-0 Gunnison next Friday. And the 2-1 Fruto Wildcats travel to Aurora tomorrow to take on the 5A Grandview Wolves, who also have that 2-1 record. Though again, that game is tomorrow at 1 p.m. Now the Wildcats have the slight edge scoring-wise, 39 points per game. The Wolves a measly 34 points per game. But anyway, it should be a high-scoring bout there tomorrow on the front range. And finally, 1A North Folk. North Fork hits the road to face 2A Montezuma Cortez. The Myers may be the lower division team, but they have a better record at 3-1 compared to the Panthers 1-2. and two. So don't count out North Fork because it could be a great matchup. Sure. Now that wraps up Friday Night Frenzy. But for the latest news, weather, and sports, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, visit westernslopenow.com. And as always, have a good night, everybody.